Welcome to Crystal Light Kids Radio Show, CLKR. Today's guest is Burke Bear from Knoxville, Tennessee. Thank you for being a guest on my show. Let me tell you about my garden this year. It's doing extremely well. It's about 42 Celsius, and it is about 108 Fahrenheit just outside Toronto. Let me tell you a little about Burke Bear. He wants to be an organic farmer, and we are going to find out why. This is a two-part question. First, I read that you started at the age of eight. Tell my audience why you got started and why you are so passionate about organic farming. Well, I mainly got started about um, researching about organic food in our food system uh, when I was around eight years old um, because one day I was looking over my mom's shoulder while she was logging on to her email and I noticed an article say that um, mercury was found in high fructose corn syrup. And from third grade science I knew, well, mercury is a chemical that can kill you, but I had no clue what this high fructose corn syrup stuff was. And so I asked my mom and she told me it was a sweetener used in sodas. And oh. That was the moment in my head where it just came and popped up and the light bulb above my head appeared. And I said, you know what? I don't want something that can kill me in the food that I drink every, uh, the food that I eat every day. And I just said, I'm not going to drink sodas anymore. And from there, I just started researching more and more about mercury, uh, mercury and then I found about um, pesticides and herbicides in our food and um, chemical fertilizers and even genetically modified organisms. And finally, I just remembered when I was researching all this, I just wanted to tell everybody that I met about it because it was so hidden from the common uh, public knowledge. Mm -hmm. So from there, I just finally was able to be given such a great opportunity to be able to start public speaking about uh, our food system and how to fix it. Really? So second, they tell us to be a vegetarian because vegetables are good for us. Tell us the truth about the dark side of a veggie dinner. Well, the dark part of a veggie dinner is an interesting um, question because veggies are great, but it just depends on how they're grown. I mean, if you have a carrot that's so mm -hmm. healthy for you, it's sprayed with pesticides and herbicides, chemical fertilizers, and it, uh, it, on another hand, it's even um, genetically engineered, it can hurt you in so many ways that the bad outweighs the good. And same with mm -hmm. um, meat, too. I mean, the uh, antibiotics and hormones can also be devastating to your diet also. And so your health just kind of um, needs to change to where you can eat organic. Organic, what it does, it eliminates the pesticides and herbicides that are in your diet, the, um, the chemical fertilizers and the genetically modified seeds, because when it's certified, it can't, none of, nobody can put any of that stuff in your food. So I definitely eat organic veggies because, like I said before, mm -hmm. they don't spray any of that stuff on it. And veggie dinners... The, the dark side is what I just is what I just explained, but there's a good side to it too. If you really research hard, you can find that there's a good side to all bad. Uh huh. So, what are you doing today in your fight for these GMO foods? Well, these days I'm advocating to get GMO foods out of our food system. Um, GMO stands for genetically modified organisms, and they are one of the biggest issues to me mainly because the um, producers of these seeds try their hardest to keep the public from knowing about them. Um, but it, it just makes me mad that um, governments help these companies um, pass these seeds mm -hmm. through the um, court system so that most people don't even know about them. And the companies even use their um, media contacts to be able to keep it hidden from us, hidden from the public, because I like to call these GMO seeds frankincense, because they're like frankincense on, the genetically, in a, on a genetic level. Because they take, um, in one instance, they take a gene from the Atlantic flounder and put um, a gene of this from this fish into a tomato. So this tomato could last co really cold winters. But what that does, it goes totally against the laws of nature and the ways that things are meant to um, produce. It, it just, totally to me, it's just an act of um, humans trying to almost play God. Mm -hmm. How did you discover the GM foods? Well, I discovered that them through um, researching. I would, like I would read things about um, corn and how it was grown, and I'd see, oh, okay, so um, they spray pesticides and herbicides. Okay, that's not that good. It's chemicals, um, chemical fertilizers that are made from fossil fuels like petroleum. Um, let's see, what else? And then I, all of a sudden I found find somewhere that over 90% of corn is grown by, by genetically modified seeds. What is genetically modified seeds? And I researched that, and I find that 
just like what I explained earlier, is that it's a part where a seed is totally taken, a gene from a totally different species is injected into a plant to give a different characteristics or trait. And it just, to me, is unnatural. And um, that's mainly how I found out about GM foods, is just by researching on the internet. Yeah. Tell us about pesticides. What can they do to our bodies? Um, pesticides is a good question. Um, I believe there's a pesticide. Um, let me look up the name here. I've heard of it before, but this pesticides are mainly made out of chemicals. They were um, they are diluted neuro neurotoxin after um, uh, bulk after wars would happen. These um, chemical companies that would take um. Uh, make neurotoxins like um, mustard gas during uh, World War One. After the war, they um, they say, the, "Oh, God, we don't have. We have all this stuff that we um, that we can't use. What are we going to? What are we going to use it for? Now we need to sell it. We have all this leftover um, chemicals, and so they diluted it with water or some other type of um, liquid to make it where it's not so powerful. It can hurt people right off the bat." But they used it to kill bugs instead, which the bugs are a lot smaller, so it takes a lot less for to kill them. So they, I mean, yeah. pesticides can have multiple different health effects too. I believe everything from um, Alzheimer's to um, mm -hmm. breathing problems. And the other day, I was actually on the internet and I saw a um, picture of a guy in a hazmat suit, and it said, "Do you think this is your pharma?" And pretty much it is because having to handle some of these chemicals you have to it's required to wear hazmat suit mm -hmm. what do you think about the advertising that they use on us kids and our parents to buy their chemicals the, the advertisements is a good question because that's these big companies and conglomerations they use these advertisements to lure kids in just like me and you I mean, I remember when I was little, I was begging my mom, can I go get a Happy Meal? I want the toy so I can mm -hmm. um, play with my Nerf guns, you know, and then I'd shoot her a little action figure down, and then and the next week another one would come out, and I'd go, can I go back and get the three different models, you know? And there's, I mean, it's unreal how uh, little kids, when I'm younger, it just, it attracts people. It's almost like moths to a flame that they attract people and they try to like I said they try to lure them in to buy their product and it's just to me it's unfair but it's a way of getting people to buy their junk mm -hmm. organic farmers are being sued by Monsanto they claim that farmers are using their seeds how do you feel about this since you want to be a farmer Wait, that's an interesting question um, like many of your questions but the thing is with Monsanto suing people is they say it's over a copyright infringement of the genes of their seeds. And these organic farmers that are being sued for not even using Monsanto seed, how in the heck do they get the genes inside their plants? And how that happened was from um, pollen trips from the bees. And the bees take the pollen from one plant and put it in another. And when the seed comes from the tomato plant that has gotten the GMO pollen in it, um, what it does is it has those genes in there, and then Monsanto will send little spies into people's fields and take samples mm -hmm. of uh, tomatoes or cucumbers mm -hmm. or squash, and then they'll test it. And if they find your genes in their um, in their uh, in your seeds or your plants, they will sue you because they say, "Oh, well, we had that um that is under our copyright. We have we have copyright that we happened to the seed, and so now you must pay us money." Well, we'll sue you for all you own, and then obviously Monsanto, being the billion-dollar corporation it is, um, always wins court battles. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about your scholarship that you received called Organic Growers School? Um, yes, I um, there is a local organization in Asheville, North Carolina, which is probably about an hour and a half drive from where I live, and they're known as the Organic Growers School, and they have a um, a conference every year at, I believe it is, um, University of uh, North Carolina in Asheville. And, um, and they have multiple classes, everything from seed saving to soil science type, um, type things. 
but um, I contacted them wanting to learn more about farming and be able to get an opportunity to go um, to be able to share my message with people too that are interested in the same thing. Um, I was able to get a scholarship and go learn more about this stuff. Mm -hmm. When you traveled to Italy, what did you find? When I went to Italy, I worked on a organic farm or worked on an organic farm that's been to um, dealing workers on organic farms. And it's an organization that you can pay money and then you can send emails to different farms and go um, work on their farm for room and board. And in Italy, it was um, a very great opportunity. I was able to work in an organic olive tree um, slash agritourism farm. And I was talking to the lady who ran it. And she was saying that even though GMOs are banned in the European Union, that there's still a lot of pesticides and herbicides being used. And that people just have this romantic notion that since GMOs aren't allowed in the um, EU, that, um, they're, that we're such a great country. Or such, um, and so that's just one of those things that mm -hmm. think something that, okay, yeah, this place is so great that we're going to all move here, but it's still not perfect and that we still need to change things. Mm -hmm. We are children, and a lot of our adults think we are being told to speak out. How does that make you feel? That's, I don't know, it just makes me um, confused, because when adults tell us that we don't, you know, that um, we don't know much of this stuff, that I really like to show them that I have things to back me up. I have articles, I have uh, doctors, the uh, the research that I have, I try to show them that I'm not making stuff up. This is what I try to do. And then I, mm -hmm. I mean, I've been thankful enough to have my parents support me in what I teach. And so mm -hmm. it's just one of those things that um, if we can convince them by having the research and uh, knowledge to back this up, that's the way that we can um, change people's minds. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us about factory farms? How do they treat the animals? Do they keep them outside like farmers do? Factory farms, um, that's just, just one of those things that it, it gets me why people would want to um, put animals in metal barns. What a factory farm is, it's a fairly large metal barn close off from sunlight and fresh air, but it has, um, I see them, they're very hard to really describe them, but they're so big, I want to say you can put a football field inside them. And the animals inside these barns have not very good lives. They're usually... Um, up to their knees and manure, um, they're eating corn, which cows aren't supposed to eat corn, and they um, have to be, because of these unsanitary conditions, too, they have to be fed antibiotics daily, and it just isn't natural for these animals to be um, in such a contained um, environment as they are. I'd rather see a cow out frolicking in a field instead of um, being trapped up in this big metal barn. Mm hmm why are companies using GMO seeds instead of organic? I guess because they feel that it's cheaper or that they believe in them because there's a lot of good propaganda that these companies that sell these GMO seeds, they try to make them look good, but they really aren't. And so most of, number one, most of the companies don't have uh, much of a choice to buy on GMO seeds. GM, or, in number two, GMO seeds are cheaper. Why would you rather buy the 99 cent? ear of corn or the dollar and fifty ears of ear of corn. And so, I mean, it's a difference in price, so people are like, okay, I want to make the most money. So I think that's the main reason why companies buy GMO seeds, uh, GMO corn and GMO seeds. It's because it's cheap and they can make more money. And it's mainly just based out of greed. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the fast food industry? The fast food industry, now, I keep looking at this food system and there's so many things wrong with it that it touch bases on. And the fast food industry, it was started, I mean, it started back in the 50s when not much of this chemical farming was going on, um, where cows still were in um, fields and pastures. But over the years, it's just been manipulated to say, oh, we use, um, we use canola oil, which is genetically modified, or we have... Um, We've decided to um, put peach slime in our hamburgers, which is ammonia-treated beef to kill the E. coli. And this, the additives, it is so unhealthy for you that the fast food industry has. It's like um, almost all of the food industry problems in one little um, restaurant. 
is what I like to think of a fast food restaurant. Yeah. Fast food industry just has fully manipulated the public's mind and um, trying to get people to eat with us and they had things like MSG to make things taste better. And just, it, it just gets me why people want to add more stuff to try to make it cheaper and, and make it taste good, but why people just wouldn't want to spend that extra dollar and actually have good things that taste good and not hurt you. Mm-hmm. We buy our soil from a farmer where they put organic compost. I have found people that buy from these large companies, their soil is not alive. Then I found out that it was pasteurized soil, meaning it's dead earth. Can you tell us about that? How do you feel about people supporting cancer? Well, compost is, a, is such a great thing that you can put on your garden. It has these little things like microbiotics. These little tiny, almost good bacteria that help the growth of your plants. There's um, one one um, microbio microbiotic that, um, called mycorrhiza, and this little um, bacteria and fungi um, it actually helps dissolve the nutrients for the plant. It lives on the ends of the roots, so that the plant may suck up these nutrients and grow bigger and taller. And the um, an interesting thing to the herbicide, the um, they kill the bacteria in the floor in the floor and bonnet inside the soil, which, like you said, makes it dead. Mm -hmm. And that without that, the plants can't really be nutrient, um, be very nutritional due to they don't have um, they do not have minerals um, that are fairly easy that are able to get to without these little mycorrhiza. And with I guess it's hard to just say it all in once, but the herbicides and the pesticides and herbicides. All these chemicals are killing the are killing the little microbiotic, which are, which makes the soil alive. And once they're killed, the soil becomes dead and leaves you with very unnutritious food. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about people supporting chemical farming, saying organic farming can't feed the world? Those who say organic farming can't feed the world are really wrong. Because the ones that support chemical farming, we've had chemical farming for years, and it hasn't, uh, it hasn't fed the world. Organic farming has fed the world pretty well in, uh, in the later years, in the uh, 19th century, the 1800s. I mean, not, you didn't see that many people going, uh, going hungry. And, I mean, look at the yards that people have, the big grass yards. If they could plant two or three tomato plants, if they could have a small garden, if every, everybody had a garden just to grow their own food, we wouldn't have that many people going starving. Another thing is just look at how many pe how much um, food is thrown away from uh, from number one from dairies and um, and uh, also packing plants that they say okay this and that's the milk that's good we need to throw it out and if it's gone out okay throw it out but if it's just fresh pumpkin you have um, you have a couple uh, pieces of um, I don't know if you have a little if 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 the heat is too high or too low. I mean, they throw out so much stuff in the packing plant that the ear of corn isn't perfect to throw it out. And just looking at how much food is thrown out, we can feed all the people that are hungry in the world. I think it's like over 1,000 pounds of food, if not way, way, way more um, of food. Uh, uh, way more, more pounds of food is thrown out than you even think. How can we lower the price of organic foods? Well, one way we can lower the price of organic foods is creating subsidies for organic foods. I mean, um, subsidies is where the government pays um, farmers to grow a certain crop, and that um, the chemical, the chemical corn and the chemical soybeans they are, have subsidies on them, so that the farmers will most likely uh, grow those crops. But there has I've never seen a subsidy for growing organic foods which just um, angers me because you need to make it a, a fair playing field for people. If you're going to have, um, if you're going to pay people to grow bad food, why don't you pay people to grow good food? Yeah, so what do you think of raw milk? They are arresting farmers for selling it. Raw milk is an interesting um, question. Uh, it's a very controversial one, too. Um, but if you look at it, the main reason why it was implemented was to shut down uh, all the small dairies and let the big dairies stay alive because the big dairies only had enough, had enough money to buy the pasteurizing machine. The small ones had 
hardly enough to even buy mm -hmm. uh, buy the tanks to get a machine. So it just it was to shut down all the competitions for the big dairies and let the um, and let the big ones have get all the money. And most of the problems with our food system these days is just centered towards greed. Mm -hmm. Tell us about chocolates, the chemical stuff that we get for Halloween, the candies. Yeah, chocolates and uh, candies and, what else, Kit Kat bars, all stuff like that. Um, just think about how a holiday has just been centered around food and sweets and just some of the stuff that really isn't good. And if you could, if you could try to at least eat organic chocolate, I mean, I won't. I won't go trick or treat. I mean, I'll go trick or treating, and I won't get any candy. I'll just walk with my friends. But um, I'm, I'll say, "Hey, mom, can you buy me a couple uh, organic chocolate bars?" I don't, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna eat any of the stuff that my friends are getting. So she goes, "Yeah, sure." And she'll, my mom will bring me back three organic chocolate bars or some um, organic peanut, peanut butter cups, you know. And it just gets me how they're. I mean, kids are always like, "Yeah, I want to go get some candy," mm -hmm. and I'm like, "You don't even know how bad it is for you." And if people would understand how bad it is for you, maybe they eat the good stuff and give it to uh, and give the good stuff to people. Mm -hmm. My final question is: What are some of your ideas on how we can support our communities? Well, uh, one of my favorite ideas about how you can support our communities is um, joining a CSA, which stands for Community Supported Agriculture. And Usually every year, a farm sends, um, sends out a message, so usually early in the spring, that says, hey, everybody, we're doing a CSA this year. And what you do is you sign up, and they usually have a price of how much your share is. It's almost like buying stock in a farm. And then every week, once, they, once the CSA starts, you get to go pick up a great box of fresh produce. Mm -hmm. It could be, you know, it could be whatever they have extra. It could be carrots, kohlrabi, um, lettuce. Whatever, whatever they're growing and they can't sell or whatever they have too much of. So that's so it really supports your farmers so they don't have to wonder, okay, am I going to make it this week due to the, the price? Plus they even have the money to buy the seed early in the spring so they don't have to worry about um, losing money too. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's one of my favorite ways of supporting your community. You can also go to local farmer's markets. Find out if there's one downtown in your local downtown city um, I know there, there's one here in Knoxville, Tennessee, and I just love going to it. It's called Market Square Farmer's Market. And there's just uh, tons of great farmers there. I love to get tomatoes or lettuce or um, basil, all sorts of different stuff. And then another, and then even just going out and meeting your farmer at their farm and saying, hey, you mind if I volunteer at your farm for a day? And usually when I talk to them, they're like, yeah, sure, come on. We, we can always use a hand. Mm -hmm. And then you can get, say, hey, by the way, do you have any extra um, uh, tomatoes, cucumbers, or mm -hmm. any extra produce? And they'll go, yeah, sure, you want to buy some? Sure. And that's another way you can support your local. I, I mean, usually all my ideas are um, connected to agriculture, but still, those are my favorite ways that I get to go out and mm -hmm. um, help people in my local. I would like to thank you, Brooke, for coming on to Crystal Light Kids Radio, and I hope you can come back in the near future. Thanks again. We can all make a difference, one by one. We are not numbers. We are people. Peace and love.